one of the earliest facelift operations. And uh, a gentleman named Charles Miller, an American, wrote the first book on cosmetic surgery, many illustrations, no actual pictures. Now, uh, 1911, you see a elliptical incision by Moreskin, Dr. Lexer, 1912. Mammography introduced in 1913 uh, as a way of examining breasts. Now, here's a man that we all know, at least some of the older people, it's Kazanjian. He was appointed to World War I unit from Boston to treat facial injuries. In World War I, there were tremendous injuries because of trench warfare. And we had virtually no experience in, in repairing them. And uh, Dr. Kazanjian, who was a dentist and was not even a, a, a medical doctor, was one of the first pioneers. In 1917, uh, a tube flap was described by Filatov and then, of course, by Dr. Gillies, another name that we all know about. Now here's a picture of Dr. Kazanjian, as I mentioned, a, a dentist, then a doctor. Uh, he was a wonderful, wonderful uh, reconstructive surgeon, and he became a physician, became a plastic surgeon, and he taught many very famous plastic surgeons who came out of Boston. These are facial masks that were done when the injury was considered to be too severe. Now here is another man that we know about, Sir Harold Gillies, ear, nose, and throat man, who was assigned to one of the various divisions to take care of these massive injuries. And you can see in this illustration that he was called Gillies the Face Maker. Now, he treated Americans, of course, like Dr. Millard, but he trained almost no one from England. And in 1936, this is a word. We have four plastic surgeons. We don't need it anymore. And only one plastic surgeon after World War I was in France for a short period of time to form a task. 